Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. It's time for part seven of my How to Paint Hero Quest series and we're looking at the Dread Warrior. Now this here is the first scheme I did, two slight variations on black armor with a red cloak because the first model was so quick I then did a second version and then did a totally different paint scheme because I loved the robe so much. The second version is this red kind of demonic looking armor with a bone colored cloak. So super quick color scheme uh, and we'll take you through what we exactly we did to make four slight variations on a theme. Now, they all started the same way, working on the metallics that are on the model. The rest of this scheme is pretty much uh, contrast paints and washes, but laying down the metallics first, just taking that silver across the head of the mace, the base of the mace where that kind of pommel is, and then onto the uh, shield, you can sort of see this very strange uh, metallic shape going around the face that's on the shield. So we painted around there in that metallics on all four of the models before we started on the contrast section. And the first model I did was actually ridiculously quick. This took about 10 minutes, drying time excluded for that obviously. Um, and we started off with the golden flesh you're seeing here. And I wanted to make this kind of shield look like, you know, a demonic leering face that was still alive and growing out of his shield. So just working that around there and kind of taking the sh inner part of the shield as the face. Um, and painting around, missing the teeth and missing the edges because we'll work on the edges later. You can see there I did get some of this contrast paint onto the metallics and I just took some time with the paint off the brush to wipe that off the metallic areas before moving on. And that's a tip when using these contrast paints is make sure that you're not getting on areas that you're not intending to paint. Obviously that's a guide with every painting, but contrast paints, the way it works, it could mess up your future layers if it goes somewhere you don't want it to. Now we're taking a skeleton horde color and we're putting that onto the chest plate and then we're gonna move on and put it on the horns and the helmet. And that's a point I forgot to mention earlier around the paints used here. You'll see them popping up at the top left of the screen, but I've also put a list at the very end for all the paints that we've used. And talking about preparing the models, if you're unsure about how to do that, I've got a video about that on the channel as well for why you might want a base coat in the color you do like you've shown here. Now moving on to the wood, there's only a very little bit of wood on this model. What you'll notice in this scheme, not a lot of paint are actually used. We're just covering off the wood on the handle. Now moving on to the cloak. Now I've run this at super speed, just because this is more about process. Uh, and this is kind of what inspired the next scheme. So what we're working with is two paints here. We're working with the black and we're working with the red. And we're putting the black on the top kind of half of the cloak. Then we're working the red and as we're putting it on, you'll see here, we're, we're putting it on like we would any other contrast paint, but a decent layer on there, but we're also pushing it up into the black and merging the black with the red. Then once we've done enough, clean the brush. You don't want to dip different paints into the pot, put a little bit more black on, pull it down into the cloak. Then you put a little bit more red on and pulling it down into the cloak and you're almost playing and blending these two colors together. Going back to a bit of normal speed, you'll see here that I've taken a little bit of red and just dotting it onto the black areas and Hopefully that gives a sense of how you can blend and mess these colours together. So um, we don't want to do the same here when you look at the shield. So the, the face has had a little bit of drying time. It is still slightly damp, but we don't want that full merging effect like we had on the robe. So what we're doing is we're doing that slightly after when the face has dried a little, but it's not fully dry. So if you pull this grey paint we're now using into the flesh colour or the bone colour you've already used, you will get a little bit of that bleeding across and that blending effect but not as much as on the cloak. You see the cloak is still drying and you can see those colors are still merging together quite dramatically. So we've used the basilicane and gray here. So I want to represent black armor. Um, I don't want to use the black color that we've used on the robe because of sort of bit of visual difference. Now here's where the two schemes are going to vary on the black armor red cloak model. So we're taking null oil. This is once the model has thoroughly dried and we're putting null oil on all the black armor areas. So just the black armor areas, not the skulls, not the wood, not anything like that uh, across the whole model. And then we're taking the sepia wash and we're putting that onto the metallics, onto the black and red robe, onto the base and onto um, the skin part of the shield you know those areas that aren't black armor so we're putting two final washes for it to dry and this is what makes the variance in the black armor red robe color scheme so at this point i was kind of doing this and i've just done the one model and this is what really inspired me to try a totally different color scheme because this again forget the drying times but that painting was about 10 minutes so i thought i'm going to move on and do the technique that i did on the robe but do it across all the armor of the model now what i'm doing first is i'm taking the red here and dropping it onto just some interesting parts of the shield so you can see here there's sort of four or five blobs i've done and then we're taking slightly slowed down this time the black and we're putting that on all the other areas and again, avoiding putting it directly where the red is, putting it on the white areas, but leading up into those red areas. And you'll see it start to kind of leach together and bleed together. And then we'll mess it around with it a little bit after with the brush and kind of blend it together. So I liked the robe quite a lot. 
thought an experiment. You can see here just uh, blobbing it around together, making sure there's no paint on the brush when you go back in the pot, taking some extra red and just dropping that extra red on there. You can see onto these highlight areas and then really then the contrast paint do its thing and merge together on the shield and give all those kind of tones and highlights and like a weird blending effect. And contrast paints I've found have been really good for that blending. Same on the actual night, taking the red, a fairly decent layer so it doesn't have time to dry and then dropping it onto areas across the night and then sped up here you can see blending it all together by painting the black on the other white areas and letting it almost leach together on the model uh, and it sort of intermingle what you don't want to do is don't put the black over the red because obviously black's that darker color but if you feel like you haven't put enough red on in places you can go back and put the red over the black so that's making some kind of sense but it's making a real kind of unusual blended armor effect slightly unpredictable because it depends how the paints are going to dry and you see there are certain areas that will pop so I focus on the red for example on the skull on the chest and on some uh, areas where I think like light would here it look interesting so that's that kind of effect doing the rest of the model it's fairly similar to what we've done before so working on the horns and the helmet and then I decided to do the entire robe in that bone color because obviously doing the robe red and black as well would have just blended the model a bit together too much or in my opinion it would now you could do a totally different color of the robe you could pick a green you could do it all in brown you could really want but i just thought that skeleton color would add a really nice kind of impact so that's primarily the two schemes you'll see here me just doing the sepia wash because you've not seen me do this over the whole model and this is over every last part of the model on this one here and that will give you again the, the other version of the black armor we've already seen so two schemes black armor red armor and the variance in those schemes is just the washes we've put on over the top. So um, yeah, and a point to note here, I'm getting very proud. I've nearly finished a pot of wash without spilling any of it. So hopefully that will happen fairly soon and the pot will be done. Um, just showing more on wash stages here. And again, this was an experimental scheme. So I wasn't 100% sure what would happen with the different variety of washes being put on the model, but it does show how that final stage can really impact what the initial work you did uh, cause because you wouldn't think the washes would actually make them look as visually different as they do in the end, but it really does make that impact. See here, putting the uh, norm oil wash onto the red part of the armor, and I think it works really nicely. I, I think I can't really pick between these four models to which I prefer. I do like them all, and I think they've all got definitely their place, but pick your favorite. So back to the actual models. On the left, we have the norm oil onto the black armor. On the right, we have the sepia wash onto the black armor. You can see it has given that kind of slightly darker effect to it. Um, other than that, the rest of the models are done exactly the same. And on this stage, it's the same thing again. So on the left, we have the null oil put onto the red armor. And on the right, we have the sepia wash put onto the, the red armor. And the sepia wash in this case, I think has definitely darkened down that kind of red and left it slightly less vibrant, but two very different effects. Again, I like them all. Uh, not sure which I prefer. Hopefully you know if you do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. And hopefully I will see you on another video.